can turn with me this morning uh, to 1 Kings chapter 3. So we're going to kind of wrap up a, a series that we've been in, and we'll tie this in with, with Thanksgiving as well. But um, we've been talking about the kings of Israel, and we've mentioned Saul, we talked about David for, for a few weeks. Uh, of course, last week we had a Gideon speaker, so we didn't, didn't touch on it there. But uh, this morning we'd like to, to look at uh, King Solomon, the last in that uh, series of kings uh, before the divided kingdom. Um, but you can turn, I said 1 Kings chapter 3. Last week we were in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12. And if you remember, well, two weeks ago, this is when we were. Uh, if you remember, we talked about David's sin, his, his downfall there in chapter 11. And really the rest of 2 Samuel and even the first part of uh, first chapter of 1 Kings uh, talks really about the, the consequences of, of David's sin, tells of the, the fallout there, uh, talks about uh, his sons repeating his sins in their own personal lives, uh, talks about a couple of them making illegitimate attempts to, to take the throne of Israel for themselves. Um, and then uh, we said at the uh, end of 1 Kings chapter 1, uh, we see Solomon finally... Uh, legitimately recognized as, as the next king of Israel with his father's blessing and the, the anointing of the, the prophet Nathan. Um, but when we get into uh, chapter 3, uh, we start looking at uh, Solomon's life and legacy from there on. And there are several things that we can mention about King Solomon. Um, he was right the, the subject of Verses or chapters one through eleven in First Kings. Um, there's more written about him in, in Chronicles, and then uh, we know that he was uh, the greatest contributor to the Book of Proverbs. So if you read through Proverbs, a lot of those things came from from Solomon. Um, we know that he's a writer of Ecclesiastes, certainly the Song of Solomon. Um, so so trying to cover this in just one sermon is is impossible, but. Uh, <laughs> But we are going to mention three things this morning uh, from Solomon's life uh, that I think that we can take some, some lessons from, um, and especially as we're going into to Thanksgiving, these things kind of can apply to us. Um, but 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, read with me, and we'll look at this first lesson here. Uh, we'll start in verse 3 and read down through verse 15. Tells us now Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father, except he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said, Ask what you wish me to give to you. Then Solomon says, you have shown great loving kindness to your servant David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth and in righteousness, in uprightness of heart toward you, and you have reserved for him this great loving kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne, uh, as it was, as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, yet I am but a child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. Your servant is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen, a great people, who you are who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? It was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon asked this thing. God said to him, Because you have Ask this thing, and have not asked for yourself long life, or, have, uh, or to have riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself discernment to judge, understand justice. Behold, I've, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart, so that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall anyone arise like you after I have also given you that you have not asked. I have also given you what you have not asked. 
both riches and honor, so that there may be many among the kings like you. Uh, so there may not be any among the kings like you in all your days. If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commandments as your father David walked, then I will prolong your days. Then it says, Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered burnt offerings and made peace offerings and made a feast for his servants. So let me start off by asking you this morning. If the Lord came to you and he said, ask whatever you will of me and I, I'll give it to you, what would, what would you ask for? What would, what would come to your mind to, to ask the Lord for? There's a lot of things that come to my mind, but I think the way that we answer that tells us a lot about, about who we are, doesn't it? And maybe we have to think about it a little bit, right? Solomon, Solomon already knew what he wanted right, right when the Lord asked, but um, for most of us, maybe we'd go, well, Lord, let me, let me get back to you on that. I, I got to think through this, right? I think it's worth noting this morning that especially as we're looking at, at Thanksgiving coming up, that, that Solomon's request actually flowed directly out of the blessings that he had been given by God, didn't he? He mentioned in verse 6 the loving kindness that God had shown to his father David, first of all to give him the throne, and then secondly to give that throne to his son, a descendant after him. And then in verse 7, Solomon recognizes that it was God himself that had given Solomon the, the kingdom of Israel to, to rule over. And the Lord had put him in that, in that position. And so Solomon is, is recognizing the things that the Lord has done on his behalf. And after he recognizes those blessings that he'd been given, uh, essentially he asks, Lord, that I would be a good steward over the things that you have given me. Right? Verse 9, he says, Give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours. So he's humbled by the blessings that God had given him, and that, that spurs him to say, Lord, I, I want to be a good steward here. Right? If you think that you've earned it yourself, you go, well, I can do whatever I want with this, right? But when we recognize that it's the Lord that has blessed us with the things that he's given us, it changes the tune a little bit, right? I think, Lord, I, I just want to use this in a way that is, is honoring to you. And so of all the things that Solomon asks for here, he asks for wisdom and tells us that, that God was pleased with that. He, he said, you know, of all the things that Solomon could have asked for, he could have asked for, he uh, mentions in verse 11, he could have asked for a long life. Could have asked for, for riches. Uh, could have asked for the life of his enemies, that, that power. Um, but Solomon doesn't ask those things. Those, those might come to mind as, as kings of nations, right? That, that might be some of the things that come to mind. Uh, but Solomon, he asked specifically for wisdom. And you might say this morning, why, why wisdom? And have you turned to actually Proverbs chapter 4 gives us some insight on, on why Solomon so quickly went, went here with his request. Why he didn't have to hesitate any on, on what he was going to ask the Lord in this moment. Turn to, you're in Proverbs chapter 4 there, and we'll read verses 1 through 9. Solomon is, is writing this section, says, Hear, O sons, the instruction of a father... And give attention that you may gain understanding. For I give you sound teaching, not as, uh, do not abandon my instruction. When I was a son to my father, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother. Who's he talking about there? David and his mother Bathsheba, right? Verse 4 says, Then he taught me and said to me, Keep your heart and hold fast my words. Uh, Keep my commandments and live. Acquire wisdom. Acquire understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. She will guard you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. 
And with all your acquiring, get understanding. Prize her and she will exalt you. She will honor you uh, if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty. You see, Solomon, in this request of the Lord, Solomon is actually heeding his father David's advice, isn't he? This is something that David had taught his son. He held wisdom up in honor, right? The things that he says about wisdom here um, have, have painted this in, in Solomon's mind as something to, to, to gain, right? In his life and in his, the way that he ruled his kingdom. I think there's a couple important reminders for us as parents and grandparents first to make sure that we're taking those opportunities to speak into the lives of our, our kids and grandkids, right? Especially as we're gathering for Thanksgiving. Take that opportunity to share with them the things, the wisdom that God has given to you in your life, in your walk with him. You might say, well, what, what do I have to share? Well, I think if you really think about it, there's, there's plenty of life that you can share with them, isn't there? There are plenty of things that might come to mind if you think about the things that they're going to have to face in their life. And so I'd encourage you to take the opportunity to, to share those things. But this is a good reminder, I think, also to, to kids. right? Some of us are still in between those roles. Um, and it's a good reminder to, to heed our, our parents' advice, right? Sometimes the, the wisdom of parents is, is something that, right, that they, they've experienced the things before, whether they've experienced them the hard way or, or they've learned them the easy way by heeding maybe their own parents' advice. Um, but as kids, we do well to, to listen to our parents and to try to follow the things that they've given us, right? So a couple lessons there for us in that. But as Solomon heeded his father's advice, uh, when the Lord asked, Ask what you will of me, and I'll give it to you. I think it's interesting that he didn't have to, to think. He, he was able to, to respond in that moment because of the instruction of his father. And it tells us that the request actually pleased the Lord. This was something good that, that Solomon could have asked for. When he could have asked for all the other things, it was good that he asked for, for wisdom. And if you go back to uh, 1 Kings there, and you turn to chapter 4, we see how abundantly the Lord has, has blessed Solomon with this request. Because it was pleasing to the Lord, he, he blessed him abundantly. It says, verse 29 in chapter 4, Now God gave Solomon wisdom and very great discernment, and breadth of mind like the sand that is on the seashore. Verse 30 says, Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the sons of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezrahite, Haman, Kalkal, and Dardan the sons of Mahol. And the, his fame was known in all the surrounding nations. It tells us that he spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. He spoke of trees from the cedars in Lebanon, uh, even to the hyssop that grows on the wall. He spoke also of animals and birds and creeping things uh, and the fish. And verse 34 says, Men came from all peoples to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. So because this was a pleasing request to God, God blessed him abundantly. So much so that people from all these nations around Israel were coming to hear of, of the wisdom of Solomon, to get, to get guidance even from him. And let me tell you, this morning, seeking wisdom from God is still something that pleases him, isn't it? James 1.5 tells us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously without reproach. And it will be given to him. How many of you have ever lacked wisdom on a subject? Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've all been there, right? And the word tells us, encourages us to go to God, that he's able to give to us that, that wisdom that we need for daily living, even small things, right? Are you thankful for that? 
Have you received that wisdom over, over your life in different times? <laughs> Maybe the hard way sometimes, but <laughs> God is able to lead us in those things and to give us that wisdom. And I think certainly as we gather for Thanksgiving this week, uh, and we remember the many blessings that God has given us, maybe it's a good opportunity for us to, to also ask, Lord, how, how can I be a good steward of these things? How can I be wise in the handling of the blessings that you've given me? I pray that the Lord would give us that, that wisdom that we might make those decisions in a God-honoring way. Now, the second scene that we'll go to in Solomon's life is there towards the end of uh, the recording in, in 1 Kings chapter 11, before it switches to the lives of his sons and, and those things, we see actually, sadly, that Solomon's wisdom pertained primarily only to his the way that he ruled the kingdom. That was his request. And was sadly lacking in his own personal life. And the way that he, he walked in that way. And we'll read some of these things in, in chapter 11. We'll read verses 1 through 4. It said, Now King Solomon loved many foreign women among the daughters of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sinomite, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, You shall not associate with them, nor, uh, nor shall they associate with you. For they will surely turn your heart after their gods. Solomon held fast to these in love. He had 700 wives and princesses and 300 concubines. And his wives turned his heart away. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods. And his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. Now David certainly had his his mistakes in his life, as we looked at a couple weeks ago. But David repented of those things. He turned back to the Lord to, to follow him. But in Solomon's case, he, he persisted in these things, didn't he? Solomon persisted to go in a, a, a bad direction, consisted to be led away by the things in his, his personal life. And as we continue in in. First Kings, we read about the, the dividing of the kingdom down there in verse, verses 11 and 12 tell us that the kingdom was, was divided between a north and south kingdom. And so the sons of, of David and Solomon, they would rule over just one tribe, Judah, while uh, the rest of the kingdom of Israel would, would be ruled by, by others. How many of you have ever known a good leader that was, was legitimately good in his leading, but his or her leading, but whose personal life uh, disqualified him from that, that process. We've all seen that in probably a number of different places and ways. And I think there's a real lesson for us here, is that we don't give ourselves so much to the, the public service of our lives, the, the work and, and community even ministries in the church, and, and neglect the, the, the work of the Lord in our, our private life, in, in our homes, in the, the private places where, where people don't see. Those are certainly places for us to, to continue to walk with the Lord in integrity. Amen? For one... Those things eventually erode the, the public ministries that you can do in your life, aren't they? Just like we see in Solomon's life. But for two, I've been to several funerals in my life. And you know who shows up at those? <laughs> it's the family. It's the close friends of the people that have lived life, isn't it? That's who's really impacted by our lives anyways, isn't it? I mean, we, we, we work and we do all these things in the community. But at the end, it's those people who really know us, right? Who are really impacted long term by us. And so I'd encourage us to, to make sure that we're following the Lord in those private matters of life. Because that's, I think, where the real impact is, Amen. 
Lastly, this morning, I want us to turn to Ecclesiastes. This is always fascinating to me. So the book of Ecclesiastes is written by Solomon. And despite all that, that Solomon had, right? The riches and the power and the, the wisdom certainly that he had. Um, the, the prosperity and power that he had as the king. All the, the neighboring kingdoms coming to him for wisdom. Look how he, he concludes all the, the worldly gain that he has had. When we get to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2. He says, and this is my translation, says, Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I like other translations a little bit better here. It says worthless. Those things, when they get amassed, the worldly uh, things that, think of all the things that, that people go after in life. And he says, look, well, at, the end of, at the end of things, when, you, when you've really come down to it, it, it's it's really quite worthless to gain all that the world has to offer, isn't it? And I think that the world would do well to heed some of Solomon's words as you go through Ecclesiastes. He talks about all the things that he has gained. He explores kind of each one and shows, really, that's, that's all going to get, get transferred, right? Essentially, it's not going to keep you away from death, and all of that changes hands at that point, doesn't it? Good for us to be reminded of that from time to time, isn't it? <laughs> it's humbling, isn't it? To think that, that all those things that, that we sometimes go after and we amass in life are not really the things that are, are critical. But we get down here, and, and really Ecclesiastes can be summed up in the last two verses of, of the whole thing. Go down there to chapter 12. We'll look at verses 13 and 14. He says there, the conclusion, when all has been heard, is this. Fear God and keep his commandments, because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. This is the real value of the book of Ecclesiastes, and really the, the life and reign of, of Solomon. We can learn a lot from the, the request he makes uh, for God, to, uh, that he requests this wisdom. That's a good example to think that we can learn from. We can certainly learn a lot from his, his foolishness and his, um, in his personal life. Uh, we, want to, want to, we don't want to neglect the, the integrity in those private places. But the ultimate lesson of his life and his reign is, is that phrase, fear God and keep his commandments. And so as, as we close this morning, I think Thanksgiving gives us a great opportunity to remember, as we said, the many blessings that God has given us. And as we do, let us not only ask the Lord to give us uh, wisdom as to how to handle those things, how to return those things to him in a God-honoring way, but let us actually do the things that he has led us to do, right? To, to keep the, the commands that he has given us in those places. To fear him, to, to have a reverence for who he is and his voice in our life. And I think that obedience is really the place where we begin to see the power of God at work in our life. Right? Until we've stepped out in obedience, we, we don't see that, that transforming power but obedience takes us from knowing about God to knowing Him personally, doesn't it? Obedience takes us from merely hearing of His power and transform transformation to really experiencing it in our, our daily walk with Him. These are the things that have lasting value even into eternity, don't they? We want to continue to follow Him and to obey Him. And I'm thankful today that that we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who has come to help us in that process. Amen? <laughs> Solomon didn't have that to, to look back on. We do. He had to look forward to the coming Messiah. You and I have Jesus Christ to help us in that process to, as it says in uh, 
1 John to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness as we, as we confess our sins and follow him. And his Holy Spirit is there to help us to, to obey the Lord, to hear and to heed his voice. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we thank you for, again, the, the opportunity to look at, at Solomon's life, to learn from it as, as briefly as we, we spent on it this morning. And Father God, we do pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to, to speak to us uh, in our life this week especially as we're approaching Thanksgiving and these, these gatherings with family and friends. I pray, Lord, that you'd encourage us to, as it says here, to, to heed your words, to, to seek wise ways to handle the blessings that you have given us. And Lord, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps us in that process. So we pray these things in Jesus' powerful and precious name this morning. Amen. God bless you this week and happy Thanksgiving.